officially just want to welcome you to the um, opening and launch of this graffiti exhibition as part of the, the forum weekend of events. Um, it's been a great privilege to work on this and put it together. The library's involvement um, really stemmed from a conversation with Melissa around trying to preserve the artworks um, of, of the of the, the wall um, at the Three Guys site. And as part of the heritage and research approach to libraries and the part of the community engagement approach that we're also trying to weave through our work, um, we just thought it would be a really nice idea to try and capture some of the artwork before the site gets redeveloped and to sort of also capture the history of the counterculture um, of the graffiti art uh, community that has existed around New Lynn and Avondale and Blockhouse Bay over the last 10, 20 years. Um, these things get lost in the midst of time if we don't capture them now. And uh, one thing we thought, you know, in the 10, 20, 30 years time, when you know our kids are all grown and looking back on the history of Avondale, and no doubt it'll look completely different to what it looks now. We want to, we want people to be able to look back and see what existed before, and to understand that that's as much a part of the history and heritage and culture of Auckland, um, you know, as, as as many of the other things that we look back on now, 50, 60, 100 years ago. When, when things were being first established around here. Um, so that's kind of what the driving force of us being involved. Um, another part of this project is we're also going to be running for the next few months an oral history project. So as well as trying to capture the images, we also want to capture um, the actual oral history, the stories um, of the graffiti community, the graffiti artist community of, of the foe. Um, and again, those will be captured and recorded and kept with the images so that future generations will be able to listen to and, and understand and hear um, what was the driving force behind this, this culture um, and to be able to appreciate the artwork well into the, into, the, into the future as well. So I just want to thank you all for taking the time out to come. Um, I know there's a lot of competing things that take our attention at this time of year, so it means a lot to have you here um, and just to the artists themselves for giving their time and their permission for us to use and share their images as well and to, and to be part of this project. So thank you again. Thank you to the staff, the Avondale staff and Manjula for giving us the space and the, the food. Um, and Ross is going to do some great thanks at the end as well to everyone who has contributed to putting this together. So I won't waste any more time running that through what he's going to repeat later. Um, and without further ado, I'll introduce Ross. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you don't need to clap. You really don't need to clap, it's okay. Um, kia ora, welcome. Um, thank you for joining us here tonight. Uh, the first activity of what is Forum. Like, like that? Okay, we're good. It's in the way of my notes now, Bobby. Anyway, so um, my name is Ross Lee. I'm one of the crew helping deliver this event. Uh, I would like to be able to ad lib. Joe did, man. You know, mentally sharp up here. I don't have that, right? So we're at risk of like, rambling monologues if I don't read from notes. So that's what I'm going to do. We're in for a bit of a talk fest anyway. You don't need me to go to um, odd places with my own thinking. So I'm going to stick to the script, okay? Um, again, welcome to Forum. It's really just, a, it's a celebration of graffiti writing because if you see the posters, that's what it says on it. And that's, I just think that's a really interesting thing or a really cool thing to be able to say celebration of graffiti writing, especially within Auckland here. Um, for graffiti is as contentious as it is complex. It's with great excitement we're able to present in this event, forum, its various activities, including these artist talks, because we have the opportunity to help try and understand it and unpick that complexity a little bit. Yeah, just how complex a subject it is um, becomes really apparent really quickly. If you just try and hold a conversation around it, 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 it pretty quickly becomes, well, me and Bobby went up to Radio New Zealand recently to do an interview to talk about forum, to talk a little bit about graffiti in general. And in the 15 minutes we had on air, we barely managed to scratch the surface and sort of came away going, yeah, like it, it is really complex. There's a lot of other parts to the conversation. Um, and like I said, this, it's really exciting that we have the opportunity to maybe get into a little bit of that um, tonight. Uh, now, if we were to advance the discussion around graffiti itself and those other issues that I mentioned that, that touches on or overlaps with, we need to move really, really quickly 
past Graffiti 101, the, the conversation that is Graffiti 101, all right? So what that means is that we just basically have to accept that it's a leg legitimate cultural activity, that it's a le legitimate art form, all right? The, the, it's been demonstrated for many, many years now. There's a ton of evidence to support it. So let's move beyond that and dig into something a little bit deeper. Um, now, I can't promise you that after tonight's talks, we have reached some kind of resolution around graffiti as a culture or as an art form or, or around its impact on society. But I know we will leave enriched, uh, better informed, and with plenty to contemplate over the weekend. Uh, before we hear from the artists, I just want to acknowledge those who have brought this event into being. Um, now, starting with Dennis, who's sitting right in the back there, Dennis Rimble. Now, Dennis is a long-time Avondale resident. He's a real advocate for arts and culture endeavor. He, uh, the seed of it lies with him, really, because he had this idea as a, as, a, as a fan of the activity that takes place over at the site, as someone who's enjoyed the painting down there, he actually wants to see more and so a real practical thing to do is to make, let's build some walls and make more walls, we'll see more art. We're not at that point yet, that's something that we're working on, but we do have forum. So the, the, the seeds of this event lie in, in Dennis's um, vision and passion uh, and dedication, so thank you for that, Dennis. Uh, I want to acknowledge Melissa Lang. Melissa is this city's first community arts broker, um, uh, which, which it's something that never existed, and you, when you sort of see the ro what the role is and what it can do, you wonder why it never existed. Um, because, um, so I, I just want to acknowledge the work that she has done in making this happen. She's done a lot of the heavy lifting, uh, and it's, there's some super tedious stuff that comes with putting something like this together, and Melissa hasn't shirked from any of that, apart from the health and safety, but that's okay. <laughs> She's done all the other stuff. <laughs> 25, see, didn't even check that, did her bit. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, Bobby Hung too. So um, Bobby, Bobby, just, yeah, he's a pretty hardworking guy involved uh, as, a, as an artist himself and as an educationalist. He uh, demonstrates a real dedication to the role graffiti can play as a cultural activity, as a professional and creative pathway for youth. Um, and especially in the Auckland region, and it's not a lip service thing. Um, he, he is involved with that uh, to a really great degree. And it's his mana as a graffiti artist that's enabled us to assemble the artists who are taking part in this event. So um, thanks, thank you, Bobby. Um, there's some other uh, organizations and individuals I, I need to quickly thank, specifically for the talk and the exhibition, um, the, the library and the crew at the library here, Dina Jacob, Sue Berman, Joe Cocker, Joyce Taylor, Manjula Patel, uh, and Jewel Leahy. Uh, we have been funded to create this event, so we, we acknowledge Creative New Zealand, we acknowledge uh, the Faux Local Board, Auckland Council, Community Facilities, Auckland Libraries, Base FM, the Avondale Jockey Club, who are hosting tomorrow's activity, uh, uh, and Phantom Bill Stickers. In regards, oh, we also have uh, activity taking place on Monday at the community centre, which is this, the activity. You can see that everyone having fun outside. That's where Monday's part of the program will take place. So thanks to Jessica Kelly. Thanks to um, the current New Zealand Poet Laureate, Selena Tusatala Marsh. Uh, she's donated a poem that will be translated into a, a, a mural on, on the Monday. Uh, special thanks to Deep One Jamie McCready for his help. He, apparently he uh, put the light boxes together for us. Um, of course, blessings to all our volunteers, members of the Faux and Avondale communities who have picked up, dropped off gear, lent us things, picked up rubbish, or supported this initiative in one way or another. Um, and that's the thanks. So there's been a lot of people who uh, have played a part. Um, we acknowledge you. We thank you. Uh, let's get on with what we're here for, listen to artists talk. The first person speaking is actually um, Bobby himself, so um, come hither, Bobby. Let's hear from you. Okay, so uh, I think um, my presentation is going to be a little bit different to everybody else's. Uh, I'm presenting much more through uh, an academic and educational kind of lens around graffiti uh, and its educational potential for youth. Okay, so. My, I started off really with um, really a provocation of 
what educational potential does graffiti art provide youth? And getting into the presentation itself, um, I would like to map the arena, basically. And I'd like to kick off by explaining to you guys what my journey was within education in terms of how I started. So I was first introduced to graffiti when I was in high school. All of my friends kind of started off tagging. Um, and at that kind of time, which was during the early 2000s, I didn't really understand what it was because I hadn't been exposed to any other forms of graffiti. And at the time, I was actually quite against it because they were tagging in their, in their um, school workbooks and they were tagging actually in the school toilets and things like that. And I was like, why would you tag on people's property? Like, this is weird. Um, and then I recall kind of one weekend, um, you know, we went out to some parties and, you know, normally I was the, kind of the sober driver and we'd have like a car, carload of boys, which at the end of the night, after all the par house parties had finished, people would start doing strays, basically tagging on fences. And at that time, I didn't have a tag. And I guess through that, eventually I came up with the tag name Burst, which I there's no crazy story behind the meaning of that name, um, but that was the name that I ran with. And pretty much from there, I ended up on all of my friends' roll calls, which was the tagging on the fences and things like that. So, and kind of at that stage, that gave me my first kind of sense of notoriety uh, amongst my peers and, and kind of acceptance in some ways. Because at high school at that time, I was, al I was also not really good at anything academic and I wasn't good at anything related to sports. And I think that, at least my perception was, if you're not good at those two things at high school, then kind of what are you good at, you know? So that, that really kind of um, led me down the path of doing graffiti. And pretty much since then till now, I've been painting graffiti for about 16 years. And it's brought me, you know, a whole heap of, rain, a range of different experiences. Um, more so than anything, within the past seven years, it's led me down a path of teaching and education. And where I'm currently, you know, studying my 14th year of tertiary study um, and my PhD in education. And I'm in my last six months of that. So it's, it's a huge milestone to have got to where I am, considering that I didn't, con considering that when I was, you know, 16, 17, I, w I thought I wasn't good at anything. So graffiti's really kind of led me to this point, okay? So that, that kind of sets the context for me, okay? Um, in terms of the demographic of people that paint graffiti, this, this is incredibly broad and you can't categorize it into, you know, one thing, you know, saying that, oh, it's just youth or it's, you know, just a particular type of social group or culture. Um, it's, it's very broad in terms of the type of people that paint graffiti, um, but I know that a lot of the people that, that I work with um, that are interested in graffiti uh, from an early age are people that come from high schools um, and often students that aren't necessarily interested in art, but graffiti is an outlet for them in some way, in many different ways actually, whether it be the fame, notoriety, acceptance, or their identity, or, or just, just wanting to do plain vandalism in some cases. Um, there are a multitude of reasons um, why they might do that, but um, more so than anything within New Zealand, you know, we've got about I think four to five generations of graffiti writers um, that have kind of gone through since since the kind of late 80s till now. Um, so there's, I guess, throughout this continuum of time, you know, there's many different types of people that do graffiti and for different reasons. Um, and there's different reasons why they continue to do graffiti. Um, in terms of the challenges that we face, that graffiti faces itself, um, you know, Ross mentioned it earlier about how we, me and him went on to Radio NZ and we only talked for 15 minutes and that just felt like the shortest period of time to talk to someone about what graffiti actually is. Um, but for me, some of the challenges that I think um, graffiti has faced since its inception really is, you know, some of the questions like, is graffiti, you know, art? Is it an art form? Um, it, it shouldn't be... It, whether or not it's legal or illegal, it still shouldn't be painted, you know, the council don't support it. And there's all these different kind of perceptions around what graffiti is. Uh, graffiti leads to other crimes and um, a range of different things, which that's, that's not why I'm kind of here to go through. Um, but what I am here to go through is the potential that graffiti provides um, and a, as a gateway to other things. So. 
In terms of looking at um, graffiti, in terms of where it stands right now, these are some of the some of the opportunities that exist for youth at the moment. Bearing in mind that I'm focused on youth, okay. Um, we've got workshops. So workshops are basically um, usually. Uh, skills-based and some of these workshops that I run are often at sc high schools, um, intermediate schools and also out at Corbin's. So normally those are kind of like uh, holiday programs that I run. Um, so that's an opportunity for them to pick up some technical skills. Uh, I'm also organizing graffiti battles and that kind of normally takes place, you know, annually or kind of pretty much two or three times per year. Uh, and that's often housed uh, at Corbin's as well. That's kind of a main spot where I run the battles, but there's also other places that I've run battles, uh, and the battles really provide, um, as well as the sketch comp sketching competitions, uh, an opportunity for basically young up-and-coming um, youth that are interested in graffiti to kind of really flex and encourage them to uh, develop a sense of competition, and obviously we've got the legal walls. Um, there are some, of, some legal walls around the city, but there are not many. Uh, Avondale is one of them, um, which is always constantly kind of being repainted with new work, uh, which is a great thing. And we've got informal mentoring. Uh, often people always, a lot, a lot of the younger writers uh, often always contact me through email, um, through Instagram, Facebook, and they're always messaging me and asking me questions. And sometimes I'll give them kind of some informal kind of advice in terms of you know some of the questions which are how do I be a graffiti artist full-time how do I get sponsored how do I make a living from doing graffiti and all these kind of um, not naive questions I don't think I, because I feel like some of those questions um, I don't even know the answer to but I can definitely push them towards the right direction um, and in some cases um, they're not just informal mentoring sometimes I I school up younger people too, you know, in terms of getting them involved in projects. So there is the practical aspect, so it's not just kind of like an oral, you know, explanation of what to do. Um, and then of course, lastly, which is the most important, is online resources. So over the past two years, I've been working, in my mind, quite hard on building my YouTube channel, which basically houses a lot of educational content around graffiti art, and that, that is pretty much a list of all these different types of activities and initiatives that I'm doing. Um, and the, the motivation for doing that is that, um, say there was a graffiti writer that started painting in 1980s or 1990s or whatever, and they've been painting for 20 years. Um, if there was a person that just started graffiti now, that's only 16, there actually is nowhere or very little places that they can actually go to to find out any sort of history about graffiti in Auckland or whatever city it is, or even about that artist specifically. Um, and you'll note that um, from, for the people that are aware of graffiti and are involved within this kind of culture, um, you guys will probably know that there are actually very little resources in terms of like publications and books and things like that around graffiti um, that explain the history of, you know, where the movement has kind of come from and where, where it's kind of going. People talk about, you know, oh, the internet, that's given accessibility to, accessibility to everybody, um, which is a great thing. Uh, but there, internationally, yes, it does cover those bases, but in terms of locally and nationally, there's very little resources. So I've been working in, incredibly hard to build online resources um, for the young people. So all these are the current opportunities um, and initiatives that I've been working on over the past two or three years quite intensely to basically develop the culture. Um, this is just a video that a bra, which is the guy in the blue shirt in the back, has actually helped me produce. Um, this is just another sample of work from one of my projects with Western Springs College, where basically I got some of the youth there, I think there was about five or six in total, to basically paint some of the works out in Point Chev and basically what I gave to them was the provocation that I wanted to focus on like a social theme and I wanted them to address a social issue and through a typographic treatment in terms of these sites and basically some of the things that they came up with were child abuse, um, money, global warming and, and war. So um, in terms of this, this is, for me, less about graffiti writing, but more about using the medium of graffiti as a starting point to then be able to propel and do other things. Um, because I don't think that graffiti has to be bound to just painting your name. Um, so this is just a sample of that. 
which leads me really to my last slide, which is really explaining um, and reframing what the rhetoric around um, the perception of graffiti is. And, and I'd just like to further reiterate to everybody here that you know, a lot of um, councils and, and people's community perceptions around graffiti is that it's vandalism, it's, you know, associated to tagging, and um, it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be condoned in any place, you know, in any shape or form. And that they're always talking about in the media how, oh, between 2014 to 2017, you know, we spent $20 million cleaning graffiti. And to me, when I hear those statistics in terms of, like, the figures of how much money they spend, surely a zero tolerance approach is not working. Do you know what I mean? So there has to be other ways. There has to be other ways. <laughs> so, so what I would like to propose is once again a provocation, and these these are things that I'm working towards achieving, and these are things that are happening right now. Okay, is once again back to the core of the question of what my presentation is: What educational potential does graffiti provide youth? Well. Firstly, for me, it's the gateway into public arts and the creative industries. Um, all the murals and street art that everybody sees in public spaces and internationally, all that, those, those two types of genres of art that everybody loves so dearly, I would dare say that, at least within Auckland, the people that are participating in those types of acti activities, about 80% of them have come from a graffiti background. All the people that are painting the street art and murals, they didn't instantly jump to that caliber of work. They did not. They started somewhere else. And my belief is they started from the roots of graffiti. Okay? Um, and so it's, an, it's, it's a gateway to another form of arts. Okay? Second thing, uh, entry into tertiary education beyond traditional schooling. So as I mentioned to you guys before, a lot of the school kids that I work with, um, they are mostly classed as at-risk you know, youth or, you know, where the traditional kind of schooling system kind of failed them, and it wasn't really for them. Um, and they don't necessarily have an interest in art at all. But what has been proven is that uh, through initiatives that I've done with my work colleague Paul Woodruff um, and Kakuno Youth Arts Collective out in Henderson, is that a lot of those youth... Um, have participated in mural and painting projects and graffiti art workshops and things like that, and that has led them... Um, into studying certificates within art and design, which I've taught them in at Unitech. So it's, it's a segue into, back into tertiary education. And the third thing is contributing to the visual culture of their community. And for me, this part's really important because um, if you don't feel like you're a part of the community in some way, you're not going to care about it. That, that's really my belief. So to be able to contribute visually, that's a really important thing. And you can talk about how much the youth are tagging or scribbling on the walls and things like that. Um, and there may be a multitude of reasons why they do that, but I guarantee you that if you get those youth that are tagging on those walls to paint something legitimate with permission, not saying that that's the only thing they need, can do, but if they do that, I guarantee you they won't tag on that wall. They won't tag on their own artwork, and it's likely that their friends are also the taggers, and their friends aren't going to tag on the wall because it's their friend's work. So that's kind of the cycle, as opposed to a zero-tolerance approach to we don't accept that type of work because I don't really, really want to be having conversations with people in the community or the council about is it art because it is. The reality is it is. It's funded by councils, it's in art galleries, it's existed since the early 60s and 70s, you, it can't be excluded. Everywhere I go, ev I've been to thir over 30 cities around the world, and every city I go to, there is graffiti, legitimate graffiti, and I can link with those people and stay at the houses. Last thing, um, which I think is a bit more, um, bit more, you know, bit more of a final step, is personal brand development and enterprise, you know? Really, in terms of a person, a young person that's coming up that has no interest in art, um, they're always um, wondering how, if they are interested in graffiti, how can they turn that into something? So for me, graffiti, you know, in terms of my name, Burst, in some ways, to me, that's not just a name that I write on a wall or paint on a wall. It's To me, that's really a brand. And associated to that, that can enable me to build leverage to create you know, art products and sell prints, sell t-shirts, sell 
toys or whatever it is. And that is something that I'll do in the future because it, this last bit comes back to um, the very point that so many young people ask me, how do I, how do I be a full-time graffiti artist? This is actually a question that so many young people ask me. Um, and once again, even I don't know the answer to that yet, which is why, and I'm not sure that there is that many people, even in New Zealand that have successfully done that. So, um, my journey in itself is working towards achieving that so that I can pave the way for future graffiti artists coming up to be able to pursue that, that goal and be able to achieve that goal at some point in time. Because um, I know that, you know, when graffiti started in 1960s, 70s, that probably wasn't anybody's intention to, you know, turn, that, turn what they do into a brand or something like that. But here we are in 2017, anything is possible, right? So, yeah, I want to... The intention of this presentation is really just to reframe the rhetoric around what graffiti is and how people perceive it. So um, that's pretty much my presentation. Awesome. Thanks.